Numbers 1. Then Yahweh spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, in the tent of meeting, on the first of the second month, in the second year after they had come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Take a census of all the congregation of the sons of Israel, by their families, by their fathers' households, according to the number of names, every male, head by head, from twenty years old and upward, whoever is able to go out to war in Israel, you and Aaron shall number them by their armies. With you, moreover, there shall be a man of each tribe, each one head of his father's household. These, then, are the names of the men who shall stand with you, of Reuben, Elizer, the son of Shadur, of Simeon, Shalumiel, the son of Zerishadai, of Judah, Nashon, the son of Amenadab, of Issachar, Nethanel, the son of Zuar, of Zebulun, Eliab, the son of Helen, of the sons of Joseph, of Ephraim, Elishama, the son of Amihud, of Manasseh, Gamaliel, the son of Pedazer, of Benjamin, Abidon, the son of Gideonai, of Dan, Ahizer, the son of Amishadai, of Asher, Pajiel, the son of Akron, of Gad, Eliasaph, the son of Duel, of Naphtali, Ahira, the son of Enon. These are they who were called upon by the congregation, the leaders of their father's tribes. They were the heads of divisions of Israel. So Moses and Aaron took these men who had been designated by name, and they assembled all the congregation together on the first of the second month. Then they registered by genealogy in their families, by their father's households, according to the number of names, from twenty years old and upward, head by head, just as Yahweh had commanded Moses. So he numbered them in the wilderness of Sinai. Now the sons of Reuben, Israel's firstborn, their genealogical registration by their families, by their father's households, according to the number of names, head by head, every male from twenty years old and upward, whoever was able to go out to war. Their numbered men of the tribe of Reuben were forty-six thousand five hundred. Of the sons of Simeon, their genealogical registration by their families, by their father's households, their numbered men, according to the number of names, head by head, every male from twenty years old and upward, whoever was able to go out to war, their numbered men of the tribe of Simeon were fifty-nine thousand three hundred. Of the sons of Gad, their genealogical registration by their families, by their father's households, according to the number of names, from twenty years old and upward, whoever was able to go out to war, their numbered men of the tribe of Gad were forty-five thousand six hundred fifty. Of the sons of Judah, their genealogical registration by their families, by their father's households, according to the number of names, from twenty years old and upward, whoever was able to go out to war, their numbered men of the tribe of Judah were seventy-four thousand six hundred. Of the sons of Issachar, their genealogical registration by their families, by their father's households, according to the number of names, from twenty years old and upward, whoever was able to go out to war, their numbered men of the tribe of Issachar were fifty-four thousand four hundred. Of the sons of Zebulun, their genealogical registration by their families, by their father's households, according to the number of names, from twenty years old and upward, whoever was able to go out to war, their numbered men of the tribe of Zebulun were fifty-seven thousand four hundred. Of the sons of Joseph, namely, of the sons of Ephraim, their genealogical registration by their families, by their father's households, according to the number of names, from twenty years old and upward, whoever was able to go out to war, their numbered men of the tribe of Ephraim were forty thousand five hundred. Of the sons of Manasseh, their genealogical registration by their families, by their father's households, according to the number of names, from twenty years old and upward, whoever was able to go out to war, their numbered men of the tribe of Manasseh were thirty-two thousand two hundred. Of the sons of Benjamin, their genealogical registration by their families, by their father's households, according to the number of names, from twenty years old and upward, whoever was able to go out to war, their numbered men of the tribe of Benjamin were thirty-five thousand five hundred. Of the sons of Dan, their genealogical registration by their families, by their father's households, according to the number of names, from twenty years old and upward, whoever was able to go out to war, their numbered men of the tribe of Dan were sixty-two thousand seven hundred. Of the sons of Asher, their genealogical registration by their families, by their father's households, according to the number of names, 
from twenty years old and upward, whoever was able to go out to war. Their numbered men of the tribe of Asher were forty-one thousand five hundred. Of the sons of Naphtali, their genealogical registration by their families, by their fathers' households, according to the number of names, from twenty years old and upward, whoever was able to go out to war. Their numbered men of the tribe of Naphtali were fifty-three thousand five hundred. These are the ones who were numbered, whom Moses and Aaron numbered, with the leaders of Israel, twelve men, each of whom was his father's household. So all the numbered men of the sons of Israel by their father's households, from twenty years old and upward, whoever was able to go out to war in Israel, even all the numbered men, were six hundred three thousand five hundred and fifty. The Levites, however, were not numbered among them by their father's tribe. Yahweh had spoken to Moses, saying, Only the tribe of Levi you shall not number, nor shall you take their census among the sons of Israel. But you shall appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of the testimony, and over all its furnishings, and over all that belongs to it. They shall carry the tabernacle and all its furnishings, and they shall attend to it. They shall also camp around the tabernacle. So when the tabernacle is to set out, the Levites shall take it down, and when the tabernacle encamps, the Levites shall set it up. But the layman who comes near shall be put to death. And the sons of Israel shall camp, each man by his own camp, and each man by his own standard, according to their armies. But the Levites shall camp around the tabernacle of the testimony, so that there will be no wrath on the congregation of the sons of Israel. So the Levites shall keep charge of the tabernacle of the testimony. Thus the sons of Israel did, according to all which Yahweh had commanded Moses, so they did. Psalm 35 of David Contend, O Yahweh, with those who contend with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take hold of shield and large shield, and rise up for my help. Draw also the spear and the battle-axe to meet those who pursue me. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Let those be ashamed and dishonored who seek my life. Let those who devise evil against me be turned back and humiliated. Let them be like chaff before the wind, with the angel of Yahweh driving them on. Let their way be dark and slippery, with the angel of Yahweh pursuing them. For without cause they hid their net for me, without cause they dug a pit for my soul. Let destruction, which he does not know, come upon him, and let the net, which he hid, catch him. Let him fall into it in destruction. And my soul shall rejoice in Yahweh. It shall be joyful in his salvation. All my bones will say, Yahweh, who is like you? Who delivers the afflicted from him who is too strong for him, and the afflicted and the needy from him who robs him? Malicious witnesses rise up, who ask me of things that I do not know. They repay me evil for good. It is bereavement to my soul. But as for me... When they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting, and my prayer kept returning to my bosom. I walked about as though it were my friend or brother. I bowed down mourning as one who sorrows for a mother. But at my stumbling they were glad and gathered themselves together. The smiters whom I did not know gathered together against me. They tore at me and never were silent. Amongst the godless jesters at a feast, they gnashed at me with their teeth. Lord, how long will you look on? Bring back my soul from their ravages, my only life from the lions. I will give you thanks in the great assembly. I will praise you among a mighty people. Let those who are wrongfully my enemies not be glad over me, nor let those who hate me without cause wink maliciously. For they do not speak peace, but they devise deceitful words against those who are quiet in the land. They opened their mouth wide against me. They said, Aha, aha, our eyes have seen it. You have seen it, O Yahweh. Do not keep silent. O Lord, do not be far from me. Stir up yourself and awake to my justice, and to my cause, my God and my Lord. Judge me, O Yahweh my God, according to your righteousness, and do not let them be glad over me. Do not let them say in their heart, Aha, our desire. Do not let them say, We have swallowed him up. Let those be ashamed and humiliated altogether who are glad at the evil done to me. Let those be clothed with shame and dishonor who magnify themselves over me. 
Let them shout for joy and be glad who delight in my righteousness. And let them say continually, Yahweh be magnified, who delights in the peace of his slave. And my tongue shall utter your righteousness and your praise all day long. Ecclesiastes 11 Cast your bread on the surface of the waters, for you will find it after many days. Divide your portion to seven or even to eight, for you do not know what calamity may occur on the earth. If the clouds are full, they empty the rain upon the earth. And whether a tree falls toward the south or toward the north, wherever the tree falls, there it lies. He who watches the wind will not sow, and he who looks at the clouds will not reap. Just as you do not know the path of the wind and how bones are formed in the womb of the pregnant woman, so you do not know the work of God who works all things. Sow your seed in the morning and do not put your hands down in the evening, for you do not know whether morning or evening sowing will succeed, or whether both of them alike will be good. The light is sweet and it is good for the eyes to see the sun. Indeed, if a man should live many years, let him be glad in them all, and let him remember the days of darkness, for they will be many. Everything that is to come will be vanity. Be glad, young man, during your childhood, and let your heart be merry during the days of young manhood, and walk in the ways of your heart and in the sights of your eyes. Yet know that God will bring you to judgment for all these things. So remove vexation from your heart and put away evil from your flesh, because childhood and the prime of life are vanity. Titus 3. Remind them to be subject to rulers, to authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work, to slander no one, to be peaceable, considerate, demonstrating all gentleness to all men. For we ourselves also once were foolish, disobedient, deceived, enslaved to various lusts and pleasures, spending our life in malice and envy, despicable, hating one another. But when the kindness and affection of God our Savior appeared, he saved us not by works, which we did in unrighteousness, but according to his mercy, through the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out upon us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we would become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying. And concerning these things, I want you to speak confidently so that those who have believed God will be intent to lead in good works. These things are good and profitable for men. But avoid foolish controversies and genealogies and strife and conflicts about the law, for they are unprofitable and worthless. Reject a factious man after a first and second warning, knowing that such a man is perverted and is sinning, being self-condemned. When I send Artemis or Tychicus to you, be diligent to come to me at Nicopolis, for I have decided to spend the winter there. Diligently help send Zenos the lawyer and Apollos on their way so that nothing is lacking for them. And our people must also learn to lead in good works, to meet pressing needs, so that they will not be unfruitful. All who are with me greet you. Greet those who love us in the faith. Grace be with you all.